<laughs> you know what? You know, actually, go, go ahead and tweet. Go ahead and add me on Twitter. Uh, because I won't check it, and you can at least express your dissatisfaction with me, and I won't get my feelings hurt because I won't ever look at it. So, so <laughs> and welcome to another episode of the Convoluted Podcast. I'm your host. Jesus, aka Tyrant Dominus, and again we get another guest from the Reddit well Reddit realm. Do apologize. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey guys, my name is Mitch Hessian. I'm an indie podcaster, uh, just kind of starting out, uh, doing some improv comedy advice on my show called Fix That for You, where we take uh, embarrassing stories from the internet or from our listeners, and we give some hilarious and also not so helpful advice on how people can recover from their embarrassment and their embarrassing stories. Um, so yeah, is that good? Yeah. Is that good? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's, no, that's good. That's good, man. That's good. You're good. Um, so yeah. Um, so the, like for one, thanks for answering my kind of post. I've been recently posting to try to get my, my like spring summer uh, spinanza started. So thank you for, uh, one, yeah, for no answering. Problem. Yeah, thanks for having um, me on. Uh, I mean, I've been I've been wanting to do a lot of uh, cross promotional stuff for a long time, but uh, it seems like it's really hard to get other podcasters uh, to line up their schedules. I, I've been talking to like two other podcasts uh, in kind of in my area, and we've been talking for like probably like four months now, just trying to like line up our schedules. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, hey, no, uh, <laughs> it's like, oh no, I can't do this. It's like, oh, I know, and I get you, man. Yeah, I've been, I uh, and uh, you're you're currently on the east coast, and I'm on the the west coast, so yeah, I get it. Hey, yeah, and, um, yeah, kind of on the east coast. We're we're in in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, so it's <laughs> I don't oh, know if just it's really like on the, on the coast necessarily. <laughs> you're like on the border where the, the like it's central and east time zone, aren't you? Yeah, I we're considered the. Uh, the uh what are we? we're the north northwest I, I guess we're like well like indiana's considered the south kind of so i guess michigan it has to be the north uh since nothing really north of michigan except for canada uh, <laughs> so I, I guess we're, we're uh, central not really central i guess i guess i would just say we're we're north northwest yeah but no, yeah, I, I I can get trying to trying to work schedules out. It's um it's kind of the things I kind of have to work with 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 talking with people, uh, with uh international. That's a that's a big one. So yeah, for sure. You probably have it a lot worse than we do because I mean you have guests on a lot. We don't. I don't think we've ever had a guest on. So, you know, we haven't really had to schedule anything too much. <laughs> but no, like like I said, thank you for coming on. And uh, I got yeah, a chance fun. to listen to I got a chance to listen to your guys' show a little bit. And, um, I like what I heard. It's uh, pretty, pretty entertaining. That's kind of something I, I look for when I'm listening to podcasts. It's something that can, uh, Thanks, I man. can just uh, I can just put in the background while I'm working. And if I overhear something funny, I, I just chuckle and put on that stupid smile because it's it's fun. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's kind of what we're going for. I mean, uh, you know, we're not. <laughs> we kind of know we're not not saying anything too intelligent, um, or too you know. We're not like, teaching anything necessarily. We're just trying to put on a good show, uh, be a little funny every once in a while, and hopefully, you know, just kind of make people's day a little bit brighter. Can you repeat that? I think you cut out just a little bit from yeah, me. No talk problem. a little slower. I think that's yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. Yeah, man. Thanks for saying that. Uh, that's that's that means a lot. That's kind of what we're going for. I think in our show is, you know, it's nothing too heavy. We don't want it to like make it make it be like a big thinking show where you have to like really listen to it but um just kind of something that people can listen to every you know and, and tune in every once in a while and uh hopefully it brightens their day if they hear something they like or you know we tell a lot of stories and, and maybe they can relate to those and laugh at those along with us no yeah and it's it's, it's perfect i like something you can put on the radio on, on the way home and just like have just have a good time um so exactly what so what what got you guys kind of what you and your your other co-hosts what what got you guys started on this? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so Kyle and Caleb, my other two co-hosts, they had already kind of experimented with the podcast world a little bit. They 
did like four episodes of a podcast. I'm not even sure they uploaded. Uh, I think they called it like the lake effect or something. Um, it's kind of a pun that, that us Michiganers have because all the weather we get is called lake effect uh, weather. A lot of like snow and stuff like that. Um, and honestly, I've never, <laughs> I've never heard it. I've never listened to it. I don't even know. I don't really even know if it exists. All I know is that they've talked about it like once or twice. Um, so they were kind of already messing around with it a little bit. Um, as for me, I, I had just started a new job in an office, um, which was new for me because my other jobs had been more like a, like a hospital clinical setting. Um, so I didn't really have like time to listen to podcasts. So I got this office job and I just started listening to all these really funny podcasts and these, and these really funny people. And I think what we're, what we kind of see a lot right now is a lot of celebrities uh, doing podcasts, which is, which is cool. Cause I love, you know, hearing about that world and, and everything like that. Um, but you also see a lot of, you know, just kind of people just kind of springing up from nowhere. Um, uh, like one of the ones that really got me interested in podcasts was it's my brother, my brother and me. It's a pretty well-known podcast. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan as well. of them. Yeah. Love the, love those guys. They're super funny. Um, so yeah, I just kind of was listening to them. I was like, where have these guys been? I've never heard of them before. I've never seen them do anything else besides this, but they're like super funny. Um, and they're just, you know, they just kind of started as three dudes, three brothers that, um, just kind of started doing some self entertainment as a podcast. Uh, granted, like that was a long time ago and the industry's changed a lot. Um, but, you know, I, it kind of got me realizing, you know, like, anybody can make a podcast. It, we're not necessarily in it to get famous or to make money. You know, that's why you don't really, we don't really push advertising. We don't really advertise outside of word of mouth. Um, just because we, we like, it, for us, it's more about getting together and just having a good time and making some stupid jokes. And, you know, maybe hopefully every once in a while making a really good joke. Um, but, yeah, so that, that was kind of what inspired me was, you know, uh, anybody can do this. It's really easy to get into. Uh, the cost of setup is is really not that high. You really don't need any any sort of equipment except for a phone. You know, if you get the microphone and if you get like the mixers and stuff, that's awesome. Um, and w which we have done that a little bit. Um, but just like the the easeability of it uh, was really appealing to me. And it was kind of at a point in my life where a lot of my friends from college, I, I stopped talking to, you know, that's just kind of how it goes. You, you know, you're in college and you're kind of around these people all the time. And then you, you, you all graduate and you go to different corners of the, of, you know, the earth maybe. Um, and you don't really hear or see anybody again. Um, but me and Caleb and Kyle, we had been in the, a, a couple of classes in our undergraduate studies. We all studied communications together. Uh, we did a lot of projects together. Um, and so that means we just kind of hung out a lot and we became really good friends in college. Um, and yeah, then we all graduated and then we didn't really see each other very much, but you know, we were still kind of talking. We still got together like maybe like once every six months, um, you know, and so I had this idea to start a podcast and I didn't really know what I wanted it to be. Uh, but I knew that if I was going to do it with anybody, I would, I would want to do it with Kyle because me and him were roommates for like a year or two. Uh, and we had really clicked and our humor styles are really similar. Um, so yeah, just that chemistry was already really natural between us. And then I met Caleb, I think like my junior year of college and just right away, uh, I could tell that we, ha we had really good chemistry and he was, uh, really, really funny and he just had a really great wit about him. Um, and I, and you know, we're all kind of living in the Grand Rapids area. Uh, so I knew if I was going to do this with, any with anybody, I was going to do it with them. Uh, so all, all I did is I just texted Kyle one day and I was like, Hey dude, you want to, you want to start a podcast? I don't really know like what it's going to be about, but like, I think it'd be a really good opportunity to just to hang out and, you know, maybe get some good laughs out of it. And, um, he was like, yeah, man, sure. That sounds great. And I was like, awesome. And you know, if we had one more person, I think that would really be, that would really, you know, make it a, a great thing. And he was like, well, you know, Caleb's in the area. So I was like, well, let's get him involved. And, and from there it was just kind of all history. We just, uh, we just started brainstorming about, you know, what we wanted to do. And, um, you know, there's a lot of topics that are covered in podcasts. And so I had kind of been listening in around to see like what was really popular, maybe like what was oversaturated and what maybe hasn't been touched on too much. Um, and the advice portion, the advice section of podcasts is it, there's a lot of those, I think. Um, but what there isn't a lot of is, is there's not a lot of uh, impractical advice. A lot of it's very practical and 
uh, as you know, for me, I don't, that doesn't really appeal to me, but the impractical stuff, the stuff that, you know, you can, you can get some jokes out of maybe that isn't too serious. I, I really found myself gravitating towards. Um, and then it was just a matter of finding a subject material, a niche. Uh, and then we just kind of settled on embarrassing stories because we felt like, you know, everyone, everyone has an embarrassing story, uh, whether they admit it or not. Everyone has this one moment or maybe like a hundred moments in their head. You know, the, you know, like when you're laying in bed and, and you're just about to fall asleep and then you think of that really stupid thing you did like in first grade, maybe like when you called your teacher mom and you've just never forgotten it. That was... Oh, no, that no, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I, exactly. I, yeah, I yeah have, I'm you, sure you, you get that. <laughs> everyone has that one thought like, right. fuck, I fucked up. Right. Yeah, I, I think I, I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, last night I was just laying in bed just thinking about, you know, I, it was like several things I had done like in school. I was just like, dang, why did I do this? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we, we felt like that, was, that could be a very relatable subject matter and we just kind of ran with it. No, yeah, that's you. Everything you said is like something that I, anyone out there has experienced when when doing this. Uh, some of the my early stuff is kind of what you guys were doing, except the the whole advice thing. It was more of a, a group um, thing. Like if you go back to like season one, what that's what I consider the dark times. Uh, it was just me <laughs> and uh, me and my me and my friends and a few members of my family just talking about the topics of, of the week and stuff like that. And uh, we went with kind of the, a, a bit of a serious slash comedic route, um, but we kind of fell apart around that time. Uh, like my listeners know, it's just uh, it's just the scheduling, trying to get everyone together. But yeah. uh, what, what, when when you can kind of click correctly, you can you can make something good. And uh, I'm glad that you guys were able to stick around because you guys are just about to hit like in your 20s soon, right? Yep, yep. Uh, we just recorded episode 20 on Tuesday. And uh, I believe Caleb is going to be editing that one this week. Me and Caleb kind of go back and forth on the editing, um, just kind of who is the most free. Um, and so he's going to be and editing that one. Guys, really yeah. That's good that you guys are splitting up uh, the work um, because when, when, when doing something like this, it's like it, it's fun, but there is a little work involved during doing all these little things. I'm, uh, I am on three different podcasts, so and I produce oh. – <laughs> and I. And I produced two of them, and I, I'm a host on a third one, luckily. So, hey man, that's a lot. Uh, I can't imagine doing more than one because I feel like my schedule is just so – it's it's already really busy. And I do a lot of tech stuff behind the scenes, so like setting up the RSS feed and um, – <laughs> Uh, like like doing the graphics and stuff like that for our cover art. Um, so yeah, just even like it's and that's not like a ton of responsibility, but I feel like it's just enough to where like I don't have as much time to scatter as I want. <laughs> no, yeah, that, it it can it can be a little bit daunting and a little bit um, like heavy sometimes, but. Uh, I kind of focus. So this is this is my main podcast, the the complicated ones, one where where I talk to random strangers. Yeah, yeah this so one right here. It, yeah, this one right here where I have you. Um, because one, I um I enjoy talking to. I just enjoy talking to people more more lately than I have before. I was uh I'm not. I used to never be a big talker. So doing this in the beginning um uh was really weird. Um, it was uh it was someone's podcast that I was the first time I was a guest on. And uh, when I, when I did his show, it was the first time that I I want to do this. I I want to do that. What's and, that show about? Like, what were you guys talking about? So the show I'm talking about is the the Wholesome Hoodlum podcast. Uh, he's been he's been on my show a couple times now, and I've been on his show a couple times. We're kind of recurring cool. characters on each other's yeah. shows now. And awesome. uh, it's it's the same thing. He, he I kind of took his his style, his interview thing. <laughs> You ate his uh, lunch. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, you know, I th I threw in a little uh, better dessert at the end of mine with uh, the dark tales <laughs> and uh, a, a nice game show. Uh, <laughs> but um, it, it, it it was it was fun trying to just uh, just talk because any anyway, everyone wants to say something in it, um, and I'm one to always want to listen to people's stories and what they're trying to do out there. So like just yeah, listening to your concept. <laughs> like, I like uh, listening to you. Sorry. Oh, you you go. You know, you go for it. 
No, it's just like you you talking about what you guys have been doing. It's something that kind of brings back memories of my earlier days in the podcasting game. It's yeah. uh it's enjoyable to listen to because I'll, I've been I've been getting contact from some of the some newer um, content creators, podcasters, of advice, and it's really weird because I've only been in the game for a little over a year, uh, and I'm still I'm still pretty new to this too. Uh, that's I think a lot of people. Uh, I'm seeing like a lot of of people make podcast with the idea that they're going to start making money right away. Like, that's what's all about to them. So, you know, they'll have, like, two episodes recorded, and there's, they're not really putting any, like, production into it. They're just kind of recording it and uploading it. And then they'll get, like, an anchor sponsor or something. I'm not really sure how that works. I don't know if they, like, pay for an advertiser or something. But So, I can, I, yeah. can tell you, I can tell you a little bit about that. So, oh, okay. my second podcast, so the second podcast I host, uh, or yeah, host slash produce is on that one because one, it's free, <laughs> so uh, it's yeah. kind of my it's my experimental podcast. So I put it over there. Uh, okay. that's the one that I I don't upload as much. Sorry, anyone who listens to that, I'll start uploading more <laughs> soon. But um, it's that one's all just talking about TV shows. It's episodic, so I just talk about every episode. So when a new episode comes out, I'll talk. So there, it, it gets stagnant. But there are listeners. Yeah. The way the way the payment system works, it's weird. Um, so one, you get yourself your own ad read. So you make yourself a, your own like ad to promote the the site. And every time that your own ad read uh, goes, you get like you get like half a penny. So the more people Basically. listen, you get more pennies and pennies. Uh, then, uh. if uh, another show or brand. Uh, takes a liking to you, uh, your show or your numbers, then they can you can add more ads to that show, and you can probably end up with like 15 ads, and you'll be raking Holy it in God. at that point. Uh, that's a lot of then, ads, though. <laughs> that's that's the thing. It's a lot. That's a lot of ads, and you don't want your show to be ads. Right. Um, it's it's more recently that my show kind of had to change a little bit. That uh, I had to put. Uh, it's not an ad, but it's a. A sponsorship or affiliation, one of those things that I have to put midway. So you guys okay. are going to be listening to something midway because uh, I recently got affiliated with a website for this show. So cool. So um, yeah, it's kind of I'm changing out the layout, but it's something that uh, depending on what you're trying to do with your show, uh, you might have to experiment the way you do because sometimes your listeners get used to. A certain format, and if you change it on them too much, people will be wondering. I've noticed that yeah. with a couple of shows that I've listened to, uh, it's only been it's been like I've only personally have only listened to podcasts within the last three years. Uh, before that, I didn't even know or care about what podcasts were at that point. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, do you? I have a question for you. Do you think that if we sort of you know, ad libbed or improvised an an advertisement for this website that they wouldn't stick one in the middle of it. Like, like they would uh, count, no, because like they would for, <laughs> for so for for anchor, you you get to choose um, if you wish to put the ads. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, I don't know what I don't know what hosting site you guys should use. For oh, we just I just found one that's free called podcast dot com and. I don't I don't really know the difference between the different hosting sites. I don't know if like some do a better job at getting your podcast out there or whatever. But we weren't like we're not looking to like make any sort of like huge following or like become internet famous or anything off this. So we just kind of wanted something free and convenient. Uh maybe if our goals change in the future we'll like think about hosting on a different site. But for right now podcast.com does everything we need. So and that's all you need to if you're if this is just for your 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 own enjoyment because that's one thing I I usually tell people is like uh, like you mentioned you shouldn't think about being famous or making money you should do it for your own enjoyment and that's one of the things that uh, I've learned more recently that I wanted to do because I just yeah one hundred percent so and I'm that's glad kind of what I was gonna talk about earlier was like a lot of people they they think they're gonna get into podcasts right away and start making money but I don't I, like a lot of people don't realize like it takes a long time to get any sort of listener base unless you like are willing to do the groundwork and like you know put in money for advertising or you know get a foundation in there but yeah I, I just don't think a lot of people realize like it's not like you don't just upload an audio file and like everyone in the world listens to it and over and like you're rich overnight or something 
Hey, man, people want to be <laughs> internet famous. Put those YouTube, yeah. Instagram, or buying clips or whatever kids say these days. <laughs> But uh, no, you're right. It's and one of the ways I, I'm glad I can do uh, help people is on this show is promote themselves. It's like my listeners can get an idea of you guys and vice versa. Cross promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, it's cool because like if you didn't do this kind of thing, there's probably a very very small chance that you and I would have ever have met or talked or, or gotten to know each other or anything. So that's this is like a really cool kind of medium for that. No, oh, and thank you. That's kind of kind of what I like and I hope anyone out there listening if you guys want to come on hit me up uh, yeah, for, for sure. sure but for sure check these guys out um, I like I said I, I, I already I've I'm already subscribed to you guys I, I'm looking oh, thanks, forward dude. to more I'm looking forward to more of you guys it's it, it, it like I said it brings a smile um, to to my face just to hear you guys try to give <laughs> your own your own version of advice <laughs> yeah yeah, you know, uh, we we always say that we're not going to stop until people stop getting embarrassed. So, uh, you know, if, if people keep having awkward situations or keep embarrassing themselves, like, we're going to be around. So, uh, we're trust here to me, help. Uh, <laughs> uh, it, <laughs> this world is filled with embarrassment. If not, <laughs> if not personally, someone on the internet will post it for them. <laughs> for sure. 100%. So, well, here's my question. Has there been a, a topic that you guys have be- that you guys have refused to not a topic but a, a story that you guys like said no we can't we can't talk about that oh man uh, every every episode we do that <laughs> oh so, there are some oh what there are some okay share there oh yeah every episode we here. so like oh man I, oh okay um let me let me pull them up here i have them saved on my phone um so every episode we we t- we record like five stories um, but we only keep three, and usually every single time we record, we come to one and we're just like, ah, this, I don't know if we can touch this yet. Pro- Maybe if we were like trained comedians, we would know how to traverse these, these like murky waters, but uh, in our inexperienced amateur improv comedy minds, like, we're just like, ah, we're just, we can't do this. Um, so let me see if I can find one real quick. Um, some of the, sometimes they're just like, okay, there's not, then this isn't really embarrassing, but, um, let's see. Sorry, this is taking a little bit. Don't um, worry. It's called I, editing I you, later. Yeah, I assume you edit these. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I can. <laughs> uh, I'm the same way. Um, but I'm keeping that part in. <laughs> that sounds good to me. So while, while you're hunting, can like uh, can aud- the like the audience submit things to you guys or... Yeah, no, we, we love it. We love it when we get people to send in stories for us. Um, we usually, we, we prefer them to be emailed to us because it's just the easiest way to keep track of them. Um, and so the email is ftfypodcast at gmail.com. So if any of your listeners have an embarrassing story that they would like some help with, uh, help recovering from, we're, we're more than happy to take our listeners' uh, embarrassing stories. Those are usually, we put priority over our listener stories over the ones we find on the internet. So if we get in the listener story, we'll, we'll put it in right away. Um, you, let's see. you guys hear that? Go submit to that, and I'll probably submit one in the future, and you'll, you'll, you'll Dude, find we, out. We, we would love to help you out, and because, because you're such a good guy, and uh, for, for letting me on this podcast and, and promote, uh, we'll, we'll make sure to give you the best advice we have. We'll use all of our... <laughs> All of our degrees and all of our training and knowledge to just re- we're gonna put you we're gonna put you like so like right now you're, you're kind of like on what we would call in a in a slump we're gonna put you on the highest mountain we can find we're gonna call in our <laughs> our eagles our giant eagles to come swoop you up off that Mount Mordor and just uh, put you right back in Isengard or we're, I don't I don't know uh, the hot the the elf place the the tree forest um thank you I appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, so this is one. I don't know if we put this one in the podcast. I don't think we did. Um, this one is by. Well, this can be a good way to. This can oh, be sorry, a good taste to, for listeners to get an idea of what you guys do a little bit. 
Uh, yeah. Um. So what we so what we do um is we'll introduce the username. So this one is written by username Sage two one nine four. Um, and Sage two one nine four writes. I started a new job on Monday. My first week was going well until today. I was chatting to some dude this morning who told me they were going out for a meal with their family tonight. As I was leaving the office just now, I said, bye, have a good weekend, everyone. Then to this guy, I said, enjoy your meal tonight. And I smiled just as he looked and he looked at me funny. Uh, I realized after leaving that it wasn't him that I spoke to this morning. So he must think I'm super fucking weird or I'm trying to poison him or something. F my life. Um, and to that, Sage2194. That's quite the predicament uh, because now you kind of look like a psycho, psycho murder. Um, I, I think what you have to do is uh, I think you have to show up at his house before he even gets there. Uh, break into his house, which it should be pretty, pretty easy to do because you're a psycho murder killer. Uh, make and figure out what this guy's favorite meal is. I think it should be pretty easy to do. Just, just kind of scrummage through his. Uh, um, his uh, uh, recipe book and uh, find the one that's like the most worn and torn. It should be something like uh, like macaroni and cheese with a little bit of bacon sprinkled in. should be very easy to make. Um, and so before he even gets home in complete darkness, make this macaroni and cheese with little bacon bits mixed into it. Uh, and when he gets home and he opens the door, turn the light on uh, and then you'll be standing there um, with his apron on and nothing else. You'll be there to greet him uh, welcome him home, make him feel comfortable, and I think he's going to really appreciate the effort you put into making to making his meal a little bit better, and, and I think he's going to be really be able to enjoy it. So, uh, there you go, Sage two one nine four. You're welcome. <laughs> that one's um, free. That one's free. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, that's what I li- that's what I listen to. <laughs> uh, and and no, Caleb it's, it's, and Kyle will chime in with their ideas. That was just me uh, off the top of my head, just doing the best I could. But you know, they're they're the real masters. I'm just there to hit the record button most of the time, uh, and then they just kind of take it away. So they're the real show. I'm j- I'm just I- I'm just the finger that hits the button. I don't know, man. You you don't don't sell your show shirt. I I <laughs> I, 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 I what, what I enjoy is your guys' chemistry. So I, I I like how you guys bounce with each other, and it's um it's something that's when it comes to when it comes to podcasts with uh, multiple people, it's something sometimes hard to do. But when it melts correctly, uh, yeah. it, it, it's gold. It's gold. Yeah, <laughs> it's really it's really hard to get going uh, when we have uh, discussions beforehand, like serious discussions. I think like right before episode twenty, me and Kyle were talking about um, patent laws. Uh, so like we were just talking about like oh, you know should patents be legal? Should they be illegal? Like do they really benefit the society? And it was like super intellectual and just. Uh, we were just talking about some like not funny ideas at all, <laughs> and by the time we record, we're like, "Dang, we're kind of like mad at each other," <laughs> but we gotta be funny. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, I see. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> what what you guys remind me of is uh, another group that I. have uh, It's been a while since I. No, oh, actually, yeah, I talked to one of their members the other day. Um, uh, it's another podcasting group. Um, and uh, the the way they they communicate. Well, maybe that's one of the reasons I, I kind of like enjoyed your guys. If you guys kind of have somewhat of a similar uh, friendship, so yeah. like, uh, what's the best way to put this? Like, it it can be it can be tough sometimes to uh, kind of get going, but when you guys do, it just it just clicks. And yeah, one one hundred percent. Trying to find that stride is. It's tricky, and I don't really know if we have it down to a science yet, but I think every once in a while we get really lucky and things just click really well, and then we, then we get a really good show out of it. Yep, so once again, you guys, go check them out. Um, uh, you, you guys will have a, a laugh. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Fix That For You, the Fix That For You podcast. Um, hello, can you hear so, me? No, oh, yeah, you're good. You're good, man. You cut out, okay. Um, yeah, um, Fix That For You podcast. Uh, it's on Spotify, iTunes, pretty much anywhere you get your podcasts, uh, except for Google Play. No, it's on Google Play. It's not on like the Siri or whatever Alexa website. Or <laughs> I don't know. I don't know these things. I don't have an Alexa. 
Oh, trust me, trying to get your show on multiple platforms is ridiculously hard. Oh my I, god, uh, yes. I spent I spent like six months trying to get them into ten sites, so it's yeah, finally over. Gathering. It's a but headache, just, but so <laughs> uh, that's the one thing that Anchor helps a lot is they do it for you. Oh so, man, that's really um, nice. So Anchor, sponsor me, please. No, you don't. <laughs> and, Not on this me. show. Um, yeah, uh, Anchor, <laughs> it's good. It's good for you. It's and it'll it'll clean your toes. I'll like like Podbean, to- sorry. This, Anchor, please sponsor Podbean, me. Podbean, I'm sorry. This this show is all yours. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um. So thank like. Uh. Let me let let's hear more about you, Mitch. Like, tell me more about yourself. Uh, um. Yes. Well, my name is Mitch Hessian. I am 24 years old. Yeah, that's right. I I always lose count. It's always like. Ever since I turned 21, I have no idea how old I am anymore. Um. <laughs> Trust me, man. The, the days, the days, the weeks start blurring in together. I, mean, I know, man. Oh, it's it sucks. So, <laughs> what, what's it gonna be like when I'm 30 or like 35? I'm. <laughs> I'll just be like, I'm almost oh. there. I'll just I'm be like, yeah, there, I'm somewhere so. between 30 and 40. I'm not. I'm not really sure. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I I grew grew up around uh, the Grand Rapids area in Michigan, uh, which is really fun because. Um, Jesus, where are you from? Are you from uh, California? No, uh, I'm originally are you from, like, LA yeah, from Chicago. I moved out to Chicago. Oregon. Yeah, Chicago. Okay, so you're from Oregon. So, so you know this then that living on I, I live like right next to Lake Michigan, and yeah, living yeah. on Lake Michigan is probably one of the best places to be because it's like living on the coast. Like it's like living in LA or it's like living in like North Carolina or Florida, except for the beach is is clear is clear water. And so it doesn't like make you throw up whenever you swim. Yep, I agree with and that. That's awesome. one thing I miss. I miss that. I have yet yeah. to visit the coast, and I'm only like a two-hour drive from there, <laughs> from here. <I'm> not gonna <laughs> lie. When I was on when I was on my honeymoon, we uh, we honeymooned in Naples, Florida, and then we we drove down to um, uh, the the Florida Keys, and we went snorkeling one time, and the salt water kept gunning down my snorkel and like into my mouth and down my throat, and I kid Ooh. you not, like I, I almost vomited I think three or four times. I was like, man, the beach, like saltwater beaches are so overrated. Lake Michigan's where it's at. <laughs> and you guys got hit with that snowstorm a couple weeks back. Oh god. Yeah, dude, we're just now. It's just now melting. Um, we had like thunderstorms and like and rain today. It's been like forty degrees. And like, there's still some snow on the ground, but the majority of it's melted, and there are like some streets that are flooded over. It's it's it was crazy, dude. But yeah, we we were stuck inside for a whole week. Um, Shit, luckily, man. I, luckily, I could work from home, but yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. That, that's the one thing I do kind of miss is the snow a little bit. Be, the area I'm currently at is yeah, uh, not really nothing. It's more of a rainy area, but yeah. the second the second we get like. The second that it announced that it's going to snow, the public goes crazy. It's like the end of the world over here. And it's, um, it's depressing to see, <laughs> see yeah. the public act that way. But yeah, yeah when, like when, when, I, you're, when, you're, when you're not living in it, snow looks really good. But like when you're living in it, it, it gets really old really quickly. I think like the second week that we had snow, I was like, yep, I'm done with this. Can, can this leave now? Oh, God. Yep. That's uh, that's. That's one thing I'm glad that I have to deal with sometimes, but it's one of those things that when when I look back at it, kind of I miss the childhood nostalgia when I like you had those snow days and you just yeah. enjoy that. Yeah, one hundred percent. And they're and those days are gone. Now it's just yeah. annoyance. You can't be when you're when you're like in middle school and high school and even elementary school. Like you cannot be a a snow day, especially when they're like when they're strung together like two or three in a row. Oh, so good. And now they're just casual annoyance to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My brother's in high school this year. It's a senior year, and they got 14 or 15 snow days. Are you so, serious? Yeah, so ah. I'm, pretty, I'm pretty mad. Shit. Oh, God. I remember those. God damn it. I remember those days. Yeah, no, now I got you, and I got you reminiscing, don't I? Eh, it, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt sometimes. <laughs> Uh, um but yeah so i yeah. so i live in michigan um i i just got married two years ago to uh, my beautiful wife danielle and uh she's in school right now so i'm just uh kind of podcasting while she's doing that i'm 
I'm a, my, my day job, I guess I should say, is I'm not a podcaster, sadly. I, I uh, do some technical writing for like a manufacturer. Um, so I have a lot of time to, to think about uh, things. And I, I like to think about, I guess, like I mostly think about the podcast and, and things we can do better, things we can do differently. Um, sometimes I'll try and write down jokes. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I do. Okay. Um, so, wait, so know, you, you said you're yeah. a technical writer. What does that entail? Yeah, like, so, um, so I guess the best way to describe it to you was, is like, think about the house, the, like the house or the apartment or whatever you live in. Excuse me. Um, and then imagine trying to describe your house to somebody without showing them any pictures and I'm not, I'm not talking about like, oh yeah, my house has white walls and like uh, brown floor, or like hardwood floor. I'm talking about like, it, it, describe the dimensions of like the walls and like the square footage and like just try and describe like how to use a sink or like how to use the stove. Um, and that's kind of what I do, but for like huge machines, like machines that will, that move a bunch of material all at once. <laughs> so you're the guy that writes those really long, like, paragraph long instructions exactly so, yes so like uh, if, you, if, if you were to like buy a bike and like you got the instruction manuals of like how to put it together and like how to do the maintenance on it that's kind of that's what i write but for like for like factories kind of okay yeah so any listener out there there's a guy who makes you read for yep. almost no period and tosses sometimes you just toss it away <laughs> at some point yep there's all that's you- what i do <laughs> so what got you into that work if i if you don't mind me asking um honestly just kind of luck uh just kind of looking for, <laughs> kind of looking for a job and then it just kind of opened up and i guess they liked me enough to that they wanted me to, to hang out every day hmm, interesting okay yeah because it <laughs> like that that's a very I'm, I'm not gonna lie it's a very odd job i've never even uh, thought it, that existed yeah, it's not like a job you're going to grow up being like, I want to be a technical writer. It's like, no, you just kind of stumble across it, and then you just kind of interview for it, and then you just kind of get it, and then you just kind of are there. <laughs> hey, those are the steps you get to get where yeah. you are. It pays the uh, bills, well, though. So, so. <laughs> what were you going to school to do then? Or- yeah, so I majored in psychology and communications. Um and for the first year out of college, I, I worked in a psych hospital, um, which, I, which was really fun. And I really liked it. I loved, like, the people I worked with. And I loved, I loved all my patients. Um, but, yeah. So then, but then, like, life just kind of happens and got to pay the bills. And so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Out. Yeah. Um, but I would love to get back into that industry someday, uh, if possible. Uh, you know, I'm. We have I have plans to go back to school and get get my master's, um, in like clinical counseling or uh, um, maybe social work or something like that. So, as long as you as long as you have yourself a, a focus, it's kind of the one things I I tell people. Yeah, yeah that's so that's the kind of my goal. That's like that's like my realistic goal. But my I think my dream. Uh, you said you were from Chicago, so this kind of relates back to that. I think my dream right now would be uh, to move to Chicago and start taking classes at like the IO Theater or like the Second Second City Theater, um, and do like some writing classes there and learn how to like write like TV scripts, like comedy for like sitcoms and stuff like that. That I think if I could, it's a really extremely tough industry to break into. Um, but if I could do that, I th- I think that would be really fun. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that, that that as long like I said, as long as you have a, some some goal in mind yeah. and you're willing to pursue it with like like enough work, it's it's possible. It's yeah, not sure. like the second you you the second you start doubting yourself, that's when that's when it's all over. Like it's yeah, yeah you, you gotta like somehow keep like that that childlike wonder alive in you somehow i think if you want if you pursue a dream like that um which i i think i have i think i could i think i could do it um but you know that's hey. what i'm that's what i say right now before things are like tough and like it's like man nobody likes what i'm writing or like nobody likes my ideas so you know hey, man. maybe that, that could change look but 
<laughs> I don't know. Look what's on TV these days. So, so um, you you the like if it's somewhat of the same comedy style you guys provide on your show, I like it. There's people that I know that would like it. Somewhere out there would like it. Yeah. If if not, there's multiple streaming platforms that are now like asking yeah, for, for sure. scripts. If not, there's YouTube. So. <laughs> that's always the fallback plan, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. well, uh, well, that's not a bad idea, too, because that's kind of a lot of ways uh, some people kind of got into the industry is yeah. having yeah. their it skits is... and their, their writing promoted. Yeah, I've been listening to like, a lot of podcasts and interviews of you know, some of my favorite comedians and, and, uh, and uh, comedy actors. And, um, yeah, so like, a lot of them, like, uh, one of my, one of my uh, I think, heroes is probably Andy Samberg, and that's exactly what he did. It was just... Oh um, uh, yeah, yeah. Just uploading videos to YouTube, and eventually, like Saturday Night Live, found them, and they were like, y- you know, <laughs> come write for us and be on our show. So it's like it, it could happen for sure. God, I, it's been a while since I heard that name. What have you been up to, <laughs> Andy yeah. Samberg? Man, he's on Brooklyn Nine Nine right now, which is hilarious. I love that show. Oh, they, they they got renewed for another season, if I remember. Correctly. Yeah, just recently. I, I was super pumped when I heard that. Man, that yeah. show, like, I, I, I'm i not a big fan, but I, I do catch it, catch it on occasion. But it, it yeah. does it, it does have a good, like, for, like, a casual, it does have a good, like, uh, it factor. And for a more cult following, it does it does have something for it, too. And I can, I can see yeah. that as an individual. Yeah, they got some really good writers on it, too. I've been... I've been kind of following them and reading up on them, and uh, yeah, they're really talented people. So yeah, that, that's another thing that uh, I myself have been kind of diving into is more of the 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 creative backgrounds between be, behind uh, TV and films is not only knowing the the actors, but also knowing some of the the directors, the producers, the writers to kind of like yeah. get an idea because that's something something that people like the average Joe wouldn't think about. Like they just see they just see a name, the actor, and like oh, is it, it's gonna probably be good, but they don't see the, right. the the people behind it and and why then why why a TV show or a film like sucked so bad because sometimes <laughs> the writing or the directing wasn't that great. It's not the it's not always the the actor's fault. There's 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 a lot that can make a, a right. show or a film exceed or fail. Yeah, one, that's a really good point. Um, you know, because I think a lot of people don't realize, like, you know, you're watching the show and the story kind of unfold on TV, and you just kind of you you kind of forget that it's scripted. I think, and you kind of just uh, suspend your belief for a little bit, and you're like, this is like this is just happening in real time. But like, what people don't realize is that there's like. 10 or 15 guys stuck in a room for 40 to 50 maybe even 60 hours a week like just mauling over jokes and like trying to find these perfect jokes that these actors can say and then like when they finally get the perfect joke and the actor you know executes it on screen nobody knows anything about like what went into that joke they just know like okay yeah this actor just said this joke and like it's the actor's joke but really it's like some other dude's joke the actor just said it (laughs) No, yeah, and I hope anyone listening kind of gets gets that. It's um, there's a lot of work that comes yeah. to on that, and uh, more recently, my uh, like I I'm listening to like, uh, like p- podcast dramas. So. Oh yeah, yeah, those are good. So yeah, that it's been just about five months that I've I like someone suggested one to me, and since I've been on this podcast game i'm like sure i'll try it and uh now i'm like six dramas in now and uh, and uh, <laughs> what are the, what are the ones you're listening to so let me quickly pull up <clears throat> to my list of shows so some of the dramas i'm listening to are load up there we go uh, archive 81 uh let's see here let's see here wolverine the, the long night Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Where are you? Uh, another one is Rabbits. Uh, I'm big into horror, so like the No Sleep podcast. Okay, yeah. And uh, a D&D one from our our McElroy boys, The Adventure Zone. Oh, yeah, The Adventure Zone, Taz. Yeah, so yeah, that's I, a good one, too. I, so those, those are kind of some of the ones I've listened to. Like, that, that in itself can... So, well, well, 
the adventure zone is more of a improv <laughs> than anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, but, I think it's more scripted than they let on, but you know, I'll I won't pull the curtain back. <laughs> like, the, the, here's one thing about the Macro Boys that I, I'm upset a little bit about. So it was, so I was like in their backlog because I, that's when I started listening to them. So there was like a like a year and a half worth of audio I was listening through. Yeah. When I finally caught up to kind of their their newest thing about a year ago they they announced that they were doing like a tour and that they were going to be there and i missed them in my area by a month oh shoot that stinks and like and like and i i heard that like the new episode like yeah we're gonna be here and like and i wait that was a month ago I'm like damn it They're like in portland or something yep they were in portland oh for yeah us, uh, some podcon <laughs> thing and i was like Shit, oh yeah it's my chance for did you go to that did you go to so, podcon no i missed it because i didn't know okay. they were gonna miss the whole thing i missed the whole thing it's a thing it's a thing that like people like some people don't know is that there's podcast conventions out there yeah. just like there's comic con there's there's a con for everything, I think. There's a con for everything, yeah. There's, there's a con for everything. And, um, it's like Box Con, a, con, a convention for boxes. There's like Paint Con, a convention for paint. If there's, if there's something, there's an interest out there, there's a, probably a con for, out there for it. So. 100%. So, uh, so I'm actually waiting for uh, to kind of network in my area a little bit more and get, yeah. get used to. Um, yeah, man, that could have been a good was, event for you to be at. You you could have really like gotten some some really cool people on your podcast. Better uh, yeah. than me. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I don't. Well, I don't know about your the area. My area is kind of still rural because I'm like outside of Portland by a good chunk. Okay, it's, okay. It's a drive, but like like I said, I was I'm I'm from Chicago originally, so I kind of like lived in that uh, kind of ghetto city kind of life. So I, now I'm in like suburbia, so it's it was a weird change. Like when you okay, see which one do you prefer? Which one do you like better? Uh, suburbia, dude. It's not, I don't hear gunshots oh, when I sleep. I don't, I like, hey, dude, if I if you're falling asleep to gunfire in the your background, something's wrong. <laughs> nothing wrong. No, nothing wrong if you guys live in that area, but it, it's you understand <laughs> it's pretty rough. You know, yeah, it's you pretty might, rough out there. You might have to take this part out, man. You're gonna offend a lot of listeners. Ah, it's fine. <laughs> there's there's a lot of things I can get offended, and there's not one of them. But no, it's a well, it, it is a different change. Uh, it's more green. I'm not gonna lie. Um, yeah. So, but no, you you could I, you could still hear gunfire. It just it's it just be like hunters or like farmers, you know, putting down horses behind the barn or something. So it's not out of, it's not out of the realm of possibilities for you. That's what I'm trying to say. No, it's not impossible. <laughs> if not, I can just go to Portland and and, and, and there I can I can enjoy a stabbing here yeah. too. Hear the hear the sounds of home. So, actually, I was in I was I was recently in Portland for I I, had, I had one of my guests actually uh, that I talked to randomly. I found out they were in the area, so they asked me to be a guest on their show, and I just drove up there and I'm like, oh, cool, random, small world. Oh, nice. <laughs> like I said, like it's it's weird when you when you're talking to people on the internet because you never know where they're at until you talk with them a little bit, and uh, when you find out that they're like when you're when you're in the t- same same time zone, that, that helps scheduling. Makes it yeah, for easier. sure. And then when they're like literally like a two hour drive, like what really? That threw me <laughs> off. But. Ugh. But if you guys want to listen to that, go check that one out. That was a that was fun. Uh, we got a BS a lot uh, over there. That got crazy. A lot of weed. Yeah. <laughs> Those are always the best episodes. So, look out for a special episode, listeners, on uh, in February on uh, April. Look forward to that. Multiple, yeah. multiple. But anyways, let's go back to you. This shows this episode's all about you. Oh, well, cool. Yeah. Uh, man, I should have dressed up. I should have worn a suit or something. Um, so, okay, let's see what else about me. Uh, I'm married. Um, told you what I do. Um, uh, I mean, let me I ask you about my in- yeah, yeah. Go for it. Uh, a little bit. You said you were you were studying psychology. What what got you interested in that that um, field? 
Yeah, so uh, I got interested in it in high school. I took an AP psych class. Just Everyone kind of took this class because it was an easy AP credit, and so I just took it as well. And I just really fell in love with the subject material, and I re it was just super interesting to me and probably more interesting than any other subject I ever studied. Um, and so I just kind of stuck with it and um, took it into, into college and majored right away. Uh, and I still loved it. I still do love it. Uh, it's just not what I'm doing right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, hoping to get into it, hoping to get back into it eventually. Yeah, because you said that you, you spend a little time at a, a psych ward? Psych yeah, psych yeah, hospital. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah how, was so, your, how was your time there and what, what, did, you, what did you do? I absolutely loved it there. Um, my, my position was called a psychiatric technician. Uh, basically what I was, was a glorified, uh, nursing assistant. So my job was to just kind of hang out on the unit and make sure everyone was safe and not doing anything to themselves or doing anything to anybody else. And, uh, I would teach some classes every once in a while. Um, I, I mean, a lot of it was just kind of hanging out with, I, I worked on the child and adolescent unit. And so a lot of it was just kind of hanging out with some kids and, you know, watching movies or doing puzzles together, or hanging out, playing basketball. So yeah, it was really fun. And, um, yeah, I loved it. Hey man, when, mostly with, when, when, when you're dealing with, uh, that age group, that's a, it's good for, for that, for not only them, it's like a good, there's like something like something memorable. Mostly when like, like, like we were saying earlier, it's like childhood can really bring back later knowing that there was someone there, for them, like yourself, yeah. that that means a lot, and uh, I I'll, I'll commend you for that. <laughs> Thanks, dude. But I mean, I, I just I I loved it. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't like a burden or anything. Uh, yeah, I just loved hanging out and, and being a, like helping these kids out, and um, you know, hopefully hopefully making them a little bit healthier when they got out of there. And every little every little bit counts if, yeah. when you really think about him. For sure. So, um, I guess I can tell you a little bit about like what I like if if you're interested in that. <laughs> Dude, you, um, you can you can tell me anything you want, and I'll listen okay. and yeah. we'll talk about it. Um, so uh, I play guitar. I love listening to music. Uh, I'll listen to anything except for country. So I'm sorry oh. for all you country lovers out there. Uh, there you I'll go. Listen to, I'll listen Man to of my words. Level rap i don't like even though that's like not like really who i am like i'm i'm not like a gangster or a metalhead by any means but like i i'll listen to that stuff and i can enjoy it and appreciate it um like blue i'll even I, I can do blue grass even but i can't go full country or pop country or whatever they call it now <laughs> uh, um, yeah around there i think the only country i can do is johnny cash and yeah. that's just because my 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 dad's kind of style yeah. of country and that's uh, even almost more rock and roll these yeah days. <laughs> so it's like yeah. barely blending in there but yeah um but no yeah i kind of i kind of follow in the same group as you was like i can listen to almost just about anything except country okay. um if i would have to say one of my top genre it's the long dead genre of disco which is my true fame okay yeah but yeah i like to sit I can, more I can, around like like uh alternative rocks so like foo fighters and um like nirvana obviously i think everyone i don't think anybody dislikes nirvana if you dislike nirvana uh go ahead and and email me at ftfy podcast and we can talk about that um <laughs> no no twitter no twitter man to like yeah, at you uh, i'm not huge on twitter like i i do have a twitter you know what here we go uh if you want to add me on twitter <laughs> just to, just to follow somebody else for whatever reason I'm pretty sure my Twitter name is just at Mitch Hessian and the M is capitalized and the H is capitalized. So that's M I T C H H E S S I O N. So uh, I guess you can add me on that. <laughs> there you go. If you want, if you have some beef with his country taste, at <laughs> yeah. <him. laughs> you know, what, you know, actually, go, go ahead and tweet. Go ahead and add me on Twitter uh, because I won't check it, and you can at least express your dissatisfaction with me, and I won't get my feelings hurt because I won't ever look at it. So it's a win-win. <laughs> Now uh, your buddies look it up like dude you have this long list of just a thread of country music man like, dude you have yeah, like a hundred thousand followers and every single one of them hates you oh i don't know i don't know man weird 
Hey man, the, the the one thing one of my buddies says, like the the moment you get your first hater on your show, that's when you know you made it. Yeah, that's what I've heard too. So I'm, maybe, waiting, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for I'm just, my first hater. Yeah, I'm just I'm just trying to streamline that process by just trying to, you know, tick off as many people as possible. <laughs> um but no, yeah, like what's interesting for me is like music for me uh, in the beginning, like my my like early like elementary years, I was there was like I I'm Hispanic, so there's always Hispanic music playing around me, and I did not find that enjoyable whatsoever. Really? I can uh, I can appreciate it now a little bit, yeah. but I did not enjoy it. So I kind of put always music in the foreground. Like I no, I do not like music. It wasn't until it wasn't until um uh the the days of Guitar Hero. Oh man, yes, that's that that's so, when I started. Damn. That's when I started to appreciate music a little more, more because I was like interactive with it, probably. But that's when I started to fall like in love with like rock and roll and the the classics, yeah. and then then it just expanded into the genres it's that funny I that you to now. That. That's funny you say that because that's like what got me kind of into the into music too, uh, and also like it got me interested in, in learning guitar. Um, yeah, so that's that's funny. One day I, I've had I had my guitar. I bought it a year and a half no two years ago. i bought my guitar two years ago uh i i told i told a bunch of people that i was going to learn how to play because um uh i don't know if you remember this there there was a game called rocksmith where you can learn how to play guitar uh-huh. and i told myself i'm gonna like the way the way that the the game developer designed it is you can actually play learn how to play a real guitar and real songs by yeah. doing this so i so, saw okay i'm gonna practice an hour a day on this game to learn a song until I learn that, then move on to another one. I have yet to put install that game into my system. <laughs> so, my, so you're almost there. You're you're like so close. You're you pretty much know guitar at this point. You just gotta actually learn it. Exactly, you guys. I I, I can groove with the best of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean that's I, I this is no, kind of no, bad I, advice, I guess. But I would just say you just gotta do it. Really, like I taught myself how to play, kind of. Like, oh, I, I just had a chord chart, and I just practiced those chords, and then I would just learn songs that I liked, and then all of a sudden, like, you can kind of play guitar. No, and I, uh, uh, one of my buddies is, um, he's, he's in a band, and he's, uh, he plays the, the heavy, the heavy rock, like okay. that, that shredding, head, shredding head double bass, headbanger stuff. Yeah. So, like, when I, when I get to see a chance, uh, like, for anyone listening, like, like when you hear music like on your phone or on the radio, it, it's it's enjoyable. Like yes, but when you see when you see them live, it's a different yeah. story. Yeah. It's like when, it, it when stops I, being like a it stops being like just a thing you're listening to and becomes like an experience. I think. Okay, that's the best. That's the best way to. That's the best way to say it. Yes, um, because when when I when I see them practice, it's like. Like, like it's it just fills me with the the, the, the drive to want to, to do something like that. That's kind of maybe the reason I bought that the guitar and yeah. things because there, he was he was kind of helping me kind of just the simple stuff to kind of get myself going and stuff like that. And um, but and he he's one of the ones that kind of got me going into go see concerts like in my because the first concert I ever saw uh wasn't until my early twenties and it was wow. The, uh yeah, let's see. It was Sick Puppies. You know, that's that was my first band that I saw. And uh, like it it's one of the things like like I, I enjoyed it, you know, it was fun and I just whenever I get a chance or they invite me, I, I do my best to go out and enjoy enjoy the the, the time I'm enjoying there. Like like oh, even sure. even when I go see like like what what is considered black metal, like like listening to it on my headphones is kind of hard, but being there with the crowd, feeling it, just like seeing the mosh pit, yeah. like, it's a whole different level. So anyone like listen, the whole atmosphere and the whole experience of it. Ex exactly. So any listener, like if you if you get a chance to listen to uh, your your favorite group, artist, or even if you're semi favorite, if they're in the area and you can afford it, like you you you'll you'll have a blast going to that. Yeah. That's the problem with concerts, man. They're so expensive. Like, mm, yeah, hundred. Like, you, it, actually, no. 
I, well, so, I guess like if you go to like smaller, like if you go to like a smaller concert, it probably isn't that bad. But if you want to like, I, me and my wife went to go see Panic at the Disco like two years ago, and it was like a hundred and forty nine dollars <sighs> just for one ticket, let alone, oh, and that was lawn seats. We were like in the very back. Are you saying? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah. Dude, damn. I, and the, and the, uh, yeah. Yeah, when it when it comes to the the what what people are like the popular artists or bands, yeah, I, it's sad that you have to pay like literally out of pocket to do that. It's so like, crazy. But like, because when, when thinking about it, like all the all like all the bands I've seen since they're like multiple bands all together, I, I usually play like like between twenty to thirty five dollars to see like three or five bands in a night and. Okay, yeah, that, that's a good that's a good deal, and that's yeah, you should be doing then, that. Support support local music. Yeah, do that. Like I, one one tradition I, I hold myself to doing when I go see see groups is, I wish I did this for my first concert, and I'm disappointed in myself that I didn't. Is like the second concert I ever went to. Uh, I can't remember the name of the band off the top of my head. The the headliner, anyways. So, um. Uh, before the show, you know how they have the the whole merch area and everything like that. Yeah. So I was kind of like my buddies were looking out there to, because they wanted to get like their album and everything. So I was just kind of looking around, seeing what they had, and like, oh okay. And then I saw this really nice T-shirt, like this really sick T-shirt, and I'll probably post it on Instagram if you guys want to see it. But I like I like that T-shirt, and I I really I couldn't tell the whoever did the graphics to look. It looked really good, and I couldn't tell the name, but I wanted it because it looked awesome, and I decided to buy it. So now, anytime Man. I go, now anytime I go see a concert, I decide that I'm going to at least buy one T-shirt, whichever looks the best from said concert. Nice, yeah, cool. Um, let's see. I also something else I like. I also I I love uh video games. Um, and mm -hmm, okay, it, okay. So, so what have you been Yeah. Um. So lately, I I've been trying to beat Skyrim for I th ever since it came out like eight years now. No I one, think. no one beats Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I, but I haven't even like made it past like the main storyline. <laughs> like, I think the Dude, first you, ever made it was like four hours in, and I had just beaten like the second dragon that's like scripted into the main story, and then I was like, well, I'm I'm getting bored, <laughs> so I so I quit, and oh, I okay. just restarted. I just restarted for like my fi probably close to fiftieth time, uh, and I'm trying to be like a mage. And so I just got to the the uh, College of Winterhold, trying to study uh, illusion magic, and I'm I'm hanging in there. But I feel I feel my desire, my determination wean already, and I'm kind of getting afraid. <laughs> oh, I thought you were gonna um, because the, the way what happened to me was I got to a certain point in the main the main thing and then I found this splinters quest and I like splintered off and I never went back to the main quest and I've never <laughs> finished the main story I've just always like oh what's this finish these storyline sure okay back to the main quest oh save this person go ahead divert again eh? <laughs> divert divert quit the has game. anyone ever Start over from beat the full game has anyone beat the main game the the main storyline like yeah it's, it's been beaten do we, do we know there's an ending to it uh, whoever has ever had the time to actually complete every single thing in that thing is a mad person. <laughs> Props to that person. But I like there is an end. Didn't they like program it to where there's like unending side quests? Like it was just there, gonna there, start recycling side quests or something? There, there's small little thing, but there, there is a completion okay. to that thing. Okay. Unless you mod it, then you're like, that is, a, yeah. then it's your life at that point. Yeah. Um, so that's what I've been playing recently. Um, me and my buddies have been playing some Smash Bros. Smart. Uh, yeah, which is oh, a great game. Smash Bros. Ultimate. I cannot recommend it enough. Um, I've been main. Hey, Nest. I play. I'm a oh, Nest okay, bro. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I, I feel like I've gotten pretty good with him. So I'm feeling good like where I'm at um, with that. Uh, my favorite game of all time is probably The Witcher 3. Uh I don't know if you, buddy, have you played that one. My buddy, my buddy tells me that's the game, and I have yet, I have it, but I have yet to play it. That's my. Oh my Skyrim. gosh, dude! You gotta, you gotta play. Have you even like tried it yet? I, I, I've, I've downloaded it. It's just not like okay. I've been like. Yeah, like, if you like start, if you like story in in a game, 
like if you like the main story of it, and even the side stories are really good too. But it, like every component of storytelling in that game is so rich. Like even the side quests are so fleshed out and like have a meaning to them and like a like a message that they're trying to get across. It's it's really good. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't recommend that one enough. Um, uh, you're the second yeah. person to say it, so now I got we I gotta, 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 gotta do it. Gotta, you got, and it's really cheap. I don't know, like, it, this is for anybody listening. If you have not played The Witcher 3 yet and you're thinking about maybe trying it out, it's so cheap to buy. It's like $20 or less, I think, for, like, for the main game and all the expansions. And, yes. Yeah, it's a great game. Um, and if you, if you find it on sale, if you're, like, have, I, I got it on the PlayStation Network on sale, and I got it for 10 bucks. Yeah, did you get all the downloads the for it, too? Everything, yes, dude. All, all so, for 10 bucks. And I, I you promise guys, you... I promise you can sink in over three hundred hours into that for and you buy and you pay ten dollars um, for hey, it. It's crazy. So yeah, I'm looking forward to. <laughs> like I said, I, I gotta just find time for. for Have that. to do uh, it. <laughs> all right, I, I got. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, I'll, I'll, now that two people in the, in the this podcast community has something, I gotta uh, gotta find time for it. So, so look good. forward to that, people, on my Twitch streaming one of these days. Also, my um, my guilty pleasure is uh, is also Pokemon. I. It, it's like the first game I ever played. Uh, I like started playing when I was so, like four years old. I couldn't even read yet, uh, but I've been playing it ever since. I'm 24 years old now, so for like 20 years. So you're talking to a 29 year old who owns every single Pokemon game. So yes, <laughs> my people. So yeah, so, so what are you getting? Sh- sh- are you gonna get oh, shield or sword? Um. So right now, I'm th- I'm probably gonna get sword because I usually get like the bluer color or like the lighter color or the cooler yeah the cooler color one um but i am but i am willing to switch over to shield if the legendary and the version exclusives are look better uh and oh yeah yeah um and i'm also gonna, i'm also a sobble bro i don't know if you've decided on your starter yet but i'm going sobble 100% uh like for some reason, I originally wanted Score Bunny, but it feels super like everyone's gonna get Score Bunny now. I, yeah. s- I-, I think I might go with the monkey. Uh, do you have do you have like a, a a reason why you pick your starter? Or you just pick whatever one you like. So, uh, honestly, it's like whoever the fine evolution is. Honestly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but, um, I, I mean that's important stuff. It has to look cool and it has to be strong. You can't. Exactly. You don't want to pick Chikorita and end up with Meganium and be like, what the frig? Why did I pick a huge flower as my Pokemon? <laughs> the, the, the thing about, uh, the thing about um, Generation 2 is like, they were super like, not generic, but it, like kind of bland as far as like, they were like yeah, I would, simplified. I yeah. Like, they they <laughs> I weren't agree. bad. Like they weren't bad, but they weren't, they weren't exciting. I think the only one that was really exciting was Typhlosion just because it's main. Uh, and then they took that away in the 3D models of it. So now he doesn't. Yeah. He only has that when he attacks. And it's like okay. Yeah. Like, so it's like like 90 percent so less. He, like cool now. So like for me, like for me, my number one favorite is Typhlosion out of the whole 800 plus. Um, really? Yeah. I just like I said, his main is legit. It just gets you. It just, <laughs> it just looks cool. Like I saw, yeah. I saw someone cosplay a nice jacket based off Typhlosion, and he had like a really cool like the around the neck. Was like the, the the red and yellow like kind of flame cushions, and it looked like a really nice comfy jacket. Did you try and like pawn it off of him? Like how much? How much for the jacket, man? I need the I need the jacket. I I did, and he, I I went up to like three hundred dollars and still wouldn't take it. <laughs> That's awesome, <laughs> guy with that jacket. Please, I'll still give you more now that I earn more money. <laughs> but no, but no, yeah, like. I'm looking forward to it. I'm glad we're getting like a, a Pokemon for the a main console since it's always been um it's, it's been far too long. I mean, we had Let's Go, but let's be honest, that wasn't really like a main game. It was like a test run. It, it was you know what what I what what I feel it was and what I'm glad it was was a good intro for all the newer generation yeah. kids. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's what's good, and uh, like for me, I, I it, it, like looking at it and playing it a little bit. It, it's fun to kind of have that nostalgia. I just didn't like some of the changes they did with the the catching mechanic being the, the yeah. Pokemon that's kind of. I, I haven't played it because I I'm just kind of holding off until the new ones come out. 
But that's what I've heard is the main complaint is with the, the catching mechanics. But I, I hear everything else is really good. It's just the catching. Yeah, it's like I, like I play Pokemon Go. So I don't want to play Pokemon Go on a Switch. So, oh. <laughs> so like, I, I want to I catch Pokemon like I did it back in the day. Like I like the overworld Pokemon walking around. That's kind of hey. cool. But like I'm I'm really excited for this next generation. Like it's always fun to see yeah. what the what's gonna come up. No, I'm very excited. The region looks really good. There's may, the possibility we might be able to go back to a previous region. Maybe let's I mean let's wait and find out. But oh, it's God. looking pretty good. So <laughs> I don't wanna, I don't want to get too excited. I don't want to get too excited yet. But it's out so, there. No, yeah. So on my I have like I said I'm on multiple podcasts on my gaming podcast the uh, the Save Point podcast. We had this long discussion of what the what the name of it would have been, and the possibility of a, a multi multi region uh, game would have been looked like. Like if you had the ability to, like if they made the game called like called it Pokemon Global, and had all the regions. You you choose oh, which you choose what region you start in. That when you go to that region, you choose that starter, and you just start the world and just travel. Be crazy dude. I don't think Game Freak will ever do anything like that. I think they, they, they have their formula and they really like it, and I don't think they will ever deviate too much away from it. <laughs> but, man, that, that would be really good. Yes. Game Freak out there. Pokemon Global. I'll let you have that idea. Free of charge. Freak, if you're listening, this is, yes, this is what the people want. Give them what they want. We'll throw money at you. Like, like go. Oh, come on. We give no, you money all the time. I, I don't. I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> I will. I will buy the game if you release it. How about that? <laughs> I, I'll. I'll throw money at you. I own like four <laughs> different. I own four like. I own four Pokemon exclusive DSs. So. It's awesome. <laughs> that my wallet is just doesn't say that. Uh, yeah, I would. <laughs> I would have to imagine. What was it like two hundred, so, three hundred for each one? Yeah, about 250 so you're looking at a grand in just uh, DSs that I have. <laughs> People, I'm not a rich person. I'm just a horrible addict in collector's editions. <laughs> just can't get enough. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, we're getting towards the end of the show. Yeah, cool. So here's a quick word from our lovely guests. This podcast brought to you by OuchThatHurts.com. Visit Ouch That Hurts for music, gaming, reviews, editorials, podcasts, and more. Ouch That Hurts. H-E-R-T-Z dot com. Come hang out and chat with everyone on our Discord channel. Be a part of our community. Okay, and we're back. So, um, at this point... uh, I normally ask my guests to tell us a tale of the the weirdest, strangest, most convoluted thing that has ever happened, you have ever done, or you have ever experienced. Okay. Um. Okay, so I have like a weird story. It's not very convoluted because I'm really not sure what happened. So there's not a ton of detail, but I can tell the one of the weirdest things that ever happened to me. If you would like me to. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, so me and my brother-in-law, we were going to go watch... Uh, it's a movie that came out a little bit ago called Tag. It's got Jake Johnson in it, and it's, it's a movie about like a, these guys that have been playing this game of Tag for like their whole lives. And so we were going to go watch it. Uh, the wives were going to go do something else. Um, and so I get to the mall first, and I'm, I'm waiting outside of the uh, ticket booth, uh, kind of on my phone, half paying attention to see if my brother-in-law is there yet, half, you know, just whatever, checking Reddit or whatever. Um, and so I look up and my brother-in-law is walking towards me from across the food court and uh, I start to put my phone away and I take one step forward and this guy comes out of nowhere and he's not very tall. He's kind of short and stocky and like he's bald and let's see, he has like a lanyard on and like army camo on like it like army pants um and he he says to me he's like he's like hey get away from me and i was like what what the heck he's like he and he like leans in close he's like listen boy i'm an army ranger like you don't mess with me i'll, I'll put you in your place and like i don't even know what's going on at this point because it's it's all happening so fast like i haven't really even comprehended that he's even talking to me yet um but then like my brother-in-law gets up like he walks away and my brother-in-law walks up to me 
Yeah. He's like, what? What was that? Like, do you know that guy? And I was like, I have no idea what just happened. I, like, he's like, what did he say to you? He's like, he said he was gonna like beat me up or something. It's like, <laughs> my brother in law is like, did you like do anything to him? I was like, N no. All I did was like put my phone away and took one step forward. Um, he's like, all right, that's kind of weird. Uh, he's like, I guess if he like runs into you again, like causes trouble, we'll we'll like do something about it. So we get in line uh, to buy our movie tickets. And this guy, he, he had walked through, like, the movie ticket booth and to, like, go, like, get a popcorn or something. I'm not really sure wh where he's at. But he, like, we're in line, and he comes back through the ticket booth, and he, I can tell he's, like, looking at me. So I'm not, I'm trying not to make eye contact because I'm just not very confrontational for no reason. Like, I don't want to start a fight in the middle of the mall for no reason. Um, so he's kind of, he's kind of, like, looking at me and, like, walking slowly and then, like, I kind of see him, like, with my peripherals looking at me. And I, I do the dumbest thing. And I, like, my brother-in-law is watching him. And I do the dumbest thing. And I take one little peek at him to make sure he's looking at me. And then, like, when I do that, he, he like, steps up to me like, he, like he's going to punch me or something. Uh, but then he just kind of stops. And then he just keeps walking. And to this day, like, I really don't know what I did to this guy to make him so mad at me. And I guess if, if you're listening, guy, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know what I did. Please forgive me. Uh, and, and that's the end of Damn. my time. Damn. Wow, dude. That is intense. That is an intense moment. <laughs> that's like one of those, that's one of those stories that I think about at night. I'm just like, I think what, what happened? Like, what did I do? Like, why was it? Why did this guy choose me to one try and fight? But anyways, I'm, I, I survived it. Dude, I'm that, okay. <laughs> I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're okay, dude. When 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 those kind of situations occur, I, oh my god, it, it's so it's so baffling when someone yeah. just it stares you down, like gives you the gives you the literal stare for no apparent reason, man. And that's, <laughs> like on top of that, you just you're just casually just going to go see a movie, and like uh, what the, <laughs> like I wasn't going to the mall like looking for anything, and I don't know. It's just like he picks me out of the crowd. And I and like the only thing that goes through my mind is kind of is just like why me like what what made you pick me? Shit, man, dude, that is that's intense and that's crazy. Like, but yeah, I'm glad good. I'm glad you're good. I'm glad you're thanks. good. Um, but thanks for thank you for sharing that, man. That's a um, so it's like anyone listening, yeah. Kind of when 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 put in situations like that, kind of just ignore it to the best of your abilities as best you can. Like that. Like you, you don't want to escalate things like that. That is something you you want to deescalate. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> if anybody does but, a, if anybody does like a confusing story podcast, like advice podcast, that can give me some advice on what happened, <laughs> I would, I would really appreciate that. Hey man, plugging, you're plugging yourself. That's how you do it. <laughs> um. All right then. Now it is time for the game show portion of the podcast. Awesome. Okay, so, so you chose to play one of our experimental podcasts, One of Us. For our listeners, One of Us is a, a game where I ask my, uh, my guests to oh. put together a rant speech uh, and preach their group, organization, or cult as best they can. They can name it. I've been, I gave you ahead of time. Uh, uh, key phrases to put in that your speech. Uh, let me know when you're ready, and I'll cue the music. Okay, I think I'm ready. All right, ready? Go. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me at the annual meeting of Colt Synonymous. Um, so I would just like to I would like to tell you guys a little about the cult that I would like you guys to join. Is this okay? Am I doing this right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're good, man. Okay, let me start over. Let me start over. Hold on. All uh, right, I got, ready? Okay, now, ready? That, now that I'm on the right track. Good. I go. Can I go? Go. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me at this week's meeting of Colts Around You. My name is Mitch, and I will be telling you a little about the cult that I represent and why you should join it. 
So our cult, our the main function of our cult is we we sacrifice chinchillas. Now I know what you're thinking. Chinchillas are cute. They're lovable. They're adorable. We love them as our pets, and we and we love to snuggle with them at night. But what I'm telling you is that chinchillas are absolutely and completely evil. You think they're cute, but behind those little lovable eyes, they're plotting the human race's destruction. Now you might say to me, Mitch, this sounds a lot like murder. This sounds a lot like you want us to kill our friendly, adorable family pet chinchilla. Well, I'm gonna ask you not to think of it as murder. Think of it more of like a noble sacrifice. We are doing the human race a great thing by getting rid of this this disease of chinchillas that are spreading across the world and the nation. How, why do you think a disease spreads so easily? Because people like it. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, hold on. Because people like it, it, it invades their houses, it invades their homes, it invades their children's lives until it's overcome and taken over the whole world. Now, once you join this cult, uh, you will receive a wonderful joining gift. Uh, you will receive a black robe that you will have to wear at all times. That's right. We wear black robes all the time. It's super hip. It's super fashionable. They come in leather, cloth, cotton. Uh, obviously, no animals are harmed in the making of these robes, uh, except for chinchillas. We, we make all of our robes out of chinchilla, fur, skin, hide, whatever you pick. Um, and as a consolation prize for joining this cult and rising up the ranks, and the more chinchillas that you can take out, we will give you some wonderful benefits at the cult mansion in Oregon. Uh, the mansion features a, a huge dining table with all the foods that you would ever want. Uh, it's got some chinchilla legs, chinchilla nuggets, chinchilla cakes. Uh, pretty much all the food we eat is made out of chinchilla. Um, it also features uh, uh, many guest rooms that you can stay in uh, at your leisure that are full of luxuries uh, such as chinchilla furs, chinchilla hides, the beds are made out of chinchilla furs and uh, we stuff them full of chinchilla bones. Um, and one of the best features of the Oregon Mansion is we have access to the Fountain of Youth. That is right people, if you join the anti-chinchilla murder cult, we will give you access to eternal life and you can spend the rest of eternity murdering, I'm sorry, sacrific noble sacrificing as many chinchillas as you can. Uh, so I, I beg you to join our cause, it is just, it is noble, uh, you will make the world a better place and you will have fun doing so. Thank you. Hmm, alright, alright. What do you think? Do you, <laughs> would you join? Would you join? Be honest. So, um, I actually have a couple of questions for you. So, we're going to the yeah. Q&A section of this show. All right. So, can you describe a perfect day for one of your cult members? Oh, oh, that, oh so, uh, so the first thing you do is you wake up in the morning and you slip on some of your chinchilla fur slippers uh, and your chinchilla fur robe. Uh, and then you go to your closet and you pick out your your best black chinchilla uh, cult outfit that you that you prefer, whether it be uh, made out of hide or uh, cotton or fur. And then you'll just spend the rest of the day just taking out as many chinchillas as you can, whether you find them in your neighbor's house, uh, your mayor's house, your swim teacher's house, anywhere you can find them, really. Uh, and that will leave you with such a sense of... Uh, a fulfillment and enjoyment that, that you'll you'll love every day of your life if you started out this way. Mm, okay, okay. Here's my next question: What is a moral offense in your cult? Um, that's a great question. We really don't have too many morals, as you can probably tell. The only moral that we that we uh, stick to is if you don't kill a chinchilla a day then uh that's yeah then you committed the greatest sin that you can and you'll be okay. kicked out of the cult so yeah then if you go one what do you, what day. do you what do your cult members fear the most that's a great question um i think our cult our cult members fear the most is the fact that if they do not 
kill at least one chinchilla a day, then we will kill them. Uh, and and I can I can't really tell why they would be so afraid because it's a pretty easy rule to follow. Uh, and so as long as you just follow the rules, there's nothing to be afraid about. So stop. I don't want I, I I don't want to get any more emails about that. All right. So I have my answer. I'll let the audience decide their answer. So so <laughs> thank you for playing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for letting me play. <laughs> Good improv, man. I, I I couldn't. I was chuckling so much. I had to mute myself on my end. <laughs> Thanks. But no. Thanks. I'm not, I'm not used to doing solo improv. That's diff- That's weird. That's different for me. I'm, I, it, it, I'm really used to playing off of what Kyle and Caleb said. Oh, there's, it, I'm, I need crutches. It, 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 it's, a, it's a difficult one when you're kind of somewhat put in a spot. But if you, 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 no, it you did fun. Your, it was fun. You did, you did well. And I, I had fun listening to that. <laughs> I, I thought about it too. Thanks. Um, but yeah. Uh, thank you for playing. I hope you had fun with that. I hope the listeners enjoyed that because that was that was entertaining. I hope so because that was uh, that, that was that was a lot. <laughs> that was a lot of chinchilla hate. I don't know where that came from, but I just want to say now I'm back to just being me. I I really don't hate chinchillas, and if you own a chinchilla, please don't tweet at me. I I, I really do love chinchillas. That's why it was like the first thing I went to because I love them so much. <laughs> you you killed the thing you hate the you love the most. Ah. noble sacrifices <laughs> so, so okay this is the portion of the show where i let my guests kind of uh like uh put any any spots that you have where they can find you where they can listen to you, all that jazz yeah so um so you can find me on i mean i guess i'm on like personally i'm on every social media um uh, i said my twitter that's at capital m mitch capital h hessian um you can follow me on Instagram. Uh, hold on. i got to figure out what my Instagram name is. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. That's MitchH50. Um, I'm on Facebook, so you can friend me there. Um, and as for the, the podcast, you can find that at FTFYPod on Twitter. Uh, you can email us at FTFYPodcast at gmail.com. Um, and we also have a Facebook page that's FTFY Podcast uh, on Facebook. So you can, you can join our page there and keep up to date on when we release episodes. Um, we, we try to stick to the schedule of releasing every Monday. So check back every Monday. There will be something new and fresh for your ears to, to listen to. All right. So um, like I said, I, I enjoy you guys. Go check them out. I'll have links down in the description below. So look forward to that. Um, that's kind of it, dude. Uh, Mitch, dude, I appreciate you taking the time to come come on the show, uh, take the time to chat, discuss things. Man, thanks for having me. I, I was really glad we could work this out. It was, <laughs> it was a little hard getting together, but we finally pulled it off. Yep, we did it. Um, so, like always, you guys, you can uh, find me just about anywhere. You can listen to podcasts. You can find me on Twitter or Instagram if you want to get in contact with me. If you want to watch me play games meteorically, catch me on Twitch. Uh, But yeah, Uh, until next time, see ya. Bye. Bye, guys. Hey everybody, uh, my name is Grant, and I host a podcast called It's Trivial. Now, It's Trivial is a game show in which I pit comedians, musicians, podcasters, and other interesting people against one another, usually in front of a live audience, for the sake of public ridicule. Hope you'll check it out. There's something there for everybody. There's stuff for uh, people who like movies, uh, music, uh, history, geography, comic books, and even more. Be sure to give me a follow here on social media on Instagram and Twitter at It's Trivial Show. And check out the entire first season of It's Trivial now in your favorite podcast app. Thanks.